Hello and welcome to the 45th video in this series, Programming a Chess Engine in C. Before I start this video, a quick thank you to a user who pointed out in the Square Attacked videos, which I think are parts 21 and 22 or somewhere around there, that there's a small bug in the Square Attack function, which I've now repaired and in the download for chapter 44, that's corrected. And just see the comments in those videos if you're wondering what the small problem there was. So, into this video and the next, we're not going to do any code, we're just quickly going to talk through how the program is going to search a position and determine what's the best move. And the way the program searches, they traverse what's called a tree of moves. And a tree of moves simply is, if you've got a, pos a starting position, you make all of the legal, all of the moves in that position up to a certain depth. So in here I've got examples where positions always have two legal moves and it's going to depth three. So the first move is made here, and then there are two replies, and for each of those replies, there are two more replies. And what the engine does is simply walk through this tree, move by move, getting the best score to a certain depth. So let's have a look at the way it does that. If we say this position here is white to move, and to depth one, so just making one move with no reply, the first move scores 10, and the second move scores 4. And in this example, white always wants the score to be as big as possible and black wants the score to be as small as possible. So white would choose, if he was searching to depth 1, to make this move here that scored 10. Let's look though to depth 2. So white makes his first move here and now black can make some replies. One of those replies is minus 20 and one of them is minus 15. So black will make the reply that scores minus 20. So the position has now scored minus 20, not 10. So going the other way, applying the same thing, Black would make the reply scoring a minus 14. So it's scoring to depth 2 a minus 14, which means white would actually choose this move when searching to depth 2 and say that the score was minus 14 because this move here scored a minus 20. Now let's go to depth 3 and have a look if we make the same principle. So we go down through the tree and now white can return a 20 or a 2. So it return a 20. So black has a 20 in this box here, circle here. On this side here, white would return the 8, so black has an 8 here. So black has a choice between a 20 and an 8. So black, of course, will return the lowest one, the 8, and we would have an 8 inside this circle here. And if you follow the same logic down here, we'd end up with a 12 in this box here, in circle there, and we'll end up with a minus 3 in this circle here, because white will choose the least negative number here. And between 12 and minus 3, black would naturally return the minus 3, so we would have a minus 3 instead of the 4. So that will cause white to choose this move which scored an 8 and you would say search to depth 3 has scored 8 and this would be the move white would make in that position. So that's what's called brute force searching, searching every move in the tree. And the way that's represented in code is something called min-max. And the way that works, I'll have a look at the max function first, is very simple. Max is from white's point of view. So we say our best score so far is minus infinity, so low, low, low. And if we haven't got any depth left, then we'll return the score from white's point of view. Otherwise, for each move in the position, make that move and call and, and the, set the score equal to min of depth minus 1. Take that back, and if the score resulting from min is better than our best so far, which for the first move it always will be because specifies minus infinite, then set best so far equals that score and return best so far. And the way min works is from black when black is moving, or black is to move, and here he's trying to minimize the score. So the only difference is that best so far is set to plus infinite, and if the move score is less than best so far, then best so far is set to the move score and we call max with depth minus 1. So let's try and envisage this for a depth 2 search. So we start here and we're searching to depth 2. So the first thing we'll do is call max with depth of 2. So we would generate then both of these two moves in the position and make for the first move we would make it and then call min with depth minus 1. So we would have made this move, we'd now be in min and depth is 1. So it isn't less than 1 so now we would generate these two moves for black and we would make the first one of these two moves and call max with depth minus one. Well, 
Now depth, when we call max, is zero because we've decremented it again, which means we return the score from the white point of view, which means this move score for the first move from black will be set to minus 20. We take the move back, and is it less than best so far? Yes, it is. So the best score so far will be set to minus 20. We then make the second move, and we end up looking at the score, which will give us our minus 15. And you say, well, is that less than best so far? Well, no, it's not, because we've got minus 20. And we've only got two moves, so now we would return best so far of minus 20. So now we'd be back in max, and the first move would have returned the minus 20 that we looked at when we walked through the tree. Well, it's better than our best so far, so best so far will be set to the minus 20. And then we do exactly the same walking through the tree as we did previously, except now I think we ended up returning the minus 14. This would be better than the best so far in the max. It would replace the minus 20, and the best score would be the minus 14, and that's the score we'd return. So this walks through the tree for white and black in exactly the same way that we walk through by hand. However, there is, and I'll just remove these now off to the side, a more efficient way of representing those two functions because they're very similar, and that's using something called the negamax function. And the way the negamax works is a couple of subtle differences. The best so far is always minus infinity, but if the depth is less than 1, or zero, then we return score from the side's point of view. And then for each move in the position, we make the move, and then we the move score is set to minus of negamax to depth minus one. Take the move, if the score is greater than best so far, best so far equals move score. So if we're in this position here, and again we're searching to a depth of two, and it's white to move, then each of the moves is generated and we make the first move of white and we call minus negamax and then in fact let's do this to depth one otherwise I'm going to get confused because the scores are going to be negated here I'll do it again if we search this to depth one we call minus negamax so we make the first move for white and now it's black to move remember so we'll go into negamax again with a depth of naught, so we return the, the score from the side's point of view. So from black's point of view, the score is a minus 10 in this, because of course it was a plus 10 for white. Or well then we're, when we come back into our original negabats, this is negated, which makes it a plus 10, and the score is greater than best so far, and is set to plus 10. So I hope you understand how that's working. It's basically using the minus sign here and the fact that the evaluation here now returns the score from the sides point of view to combine min and max into one search function. I'll also say that a really good explanation for how this works is on a programmer's site, a guy called Bruce Moreland, who wrote a set of articles on programming chess with some pseudo code on there which is really really good and it's where I've taken these explanations from and his site no longer exists unfortunately but I'll put a link in the description which sends you to the Winboard forum and in one of the posts there there's a link to how you can download and archive this site because the articles are absolutely excellent and the functions are already written for the functions that we'll be using to program this program. Okay so that's it for this video. It's an explanation of how we use Negamatch to do a brute force search in the whole tree. Of course, that's not the best way of searching because you already saw in the perf testing that when you have a branching factor of around 30 or 40, not just two like here, then when you're four or five move deep, moves deep, you're already looking at searching hundreds of millions of positions. And at 500,000 per second, it means we're never really going to get beyond depth five. So there's a much more efficient way of doing this, and it's using upper and lower bounds on these scores, and it's called alpha beta search. And this algorithm is what we'll be using in the engine, and what I'll be looking at in the next video. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.